A story was published today about a woman who was in the subway in London when a man approached her screaming, threatening to attack her, and then he attacked her, seemingly for no reason. Now, this woman is upset because she said two white men who looked like they were in their 50s refused to help her, refused to intervene, and then actually got up and left the subway cart. I keep hearing stories about men who refuse to intervene to protect women and children, and so I started wondering, is this actually a recurring trend? Is this actually getting worse, where men are no longer going to step in to protect people? And if it is, what's actually causing it? Before we get started, head over to youtube.com slash timcastnews for my live stream channel. If any breaking news happens, I will be live here. And I will also have periodic live streams talking about news and other issues. There will be a button right here that you can click to subscribe. And if you really want to support my work, go to patreon.com forward slash timcast and click become a patron and give whatever you are comfortable giving to help support my work. It is all greatly appreciated. From the Daily Mail, fashion chief executive who was attacked by six foot Northern Line tube passenger slams two white middle class men after they walked into next carriage and left her to defend herself. Tamara Sinchik was kicked and threatened while traveling to a business meeting in central London yesterday. The mother of one told Mail Online children were crying as the agitated man squared up to her and started violently attacking her in the middle of the carriage. Recounting the incident, she said, I got on the tube at Highgate and I was going to Old Street. A man got on an archway. He was about six foot and around 30 to 35 years old and he just started screaming. At first, I thought he was some sort of performance artist but then it became clear that he was not well. He was screaming and shouting at me, saying things like, I am going to effing kick you. Then he did actually kick me. It was intimidating. He was a big guy and I am only size eight. The fashion CEO is keen to stress she does not blame this man, who she believes needs medical help, but said the incident was terrifying. Instead, she is upset that two men she describes as white and middle class chose not to help and move to another carriage. I remain more angry with those white middle-class men who left me to it. As fathers, husbands, and sons, they should be ashamed of themselves. Miss Sinchik praised those who came to her aid as angels, saying an Eastern European man who had seen the guy on the platform had worked his way down the train as he felt that man was dangerous, and he got to me when the train stopped. She said her message to those who left her was, you are cowards with less empathy and strength than two size eight women and a Greek female pensioner. Shame on you. If you were so scared is one thing, but one of you had a briefcase and could have helped me and both of you could have pulled the cord from the safety of the next carriage that you left me for. I would never in my life do that. First, I'd like to point out that I find it interesting that she actually blames the two men who weren't involved over the man who actually attacked her. Simply because someone seems like they might need medical help doesn't absolve them of their own personal responsibilities, though I understand not holding anyone at fault for the incident. I also am curious as to why these two men got up and refused to help. So I started looking into other stories. And it turns out there might be a trend, or at least the perception of a trend, of those who seek to help others being punished for doing so. One of the first stories I found is from The Telegraph. Good Samaritan jailed for six years for punching drug dealer who attacked a woman. Carl Neal jailed for punching violent drug dealer who was not prosecuted for a violent attack on a woman, which triggered the confrontation. A good Samaritan who stepped in and punched a violent drug dealer who was attacking a young woman has been jailed for six years. Father of one Carl Neal was jailed after felling a violent drug dealer with a single punch after he helped a young woman who was being attacked in the street. Mr. Neal, 23, intervened when he saw the woman being punched and pinned against a car bonnet. Mr. Neal shouted at the dealer, who was owed a 40 pound debt by the woman, to leave the woman alone, and then knocked him down with one punch. He hit the drug dealer again before walking away from the scene. The dealer was left fighting for his life with doctors removing a portion of his skull to allow his brain to swell. He was put into an induced coma while surgeons fought to treat numerous brain bleeds and multiple facial fractures. Eventually, his condition improved and he has since been released from the hospital but doctors warn that he will continue to suffer with fatigue, memory loss, and anxiety attacks. The drug dealer's injuries were so horrific, he was not prosecuted for his violent attack on the woman that provoked the altercation. As well as the grievous bodily harm charge, which he admitted, Neil was also sentenced for the offenses of dangerous driving, assault with intent to resist arrest, and driving whilst disqualified, committed last January. 
and attempted burglary, aggravated vehicle taking, and driving whilst disqualified committed last August. It would appear that this story is a tad bit biased. This person has a previous list of charges, and the reason he got six years is probably because of unrelated incidents to this. However, the prosecution does accept that his intervention contributed to his charges, that he received a grievous bodily harm charge for intervening to protect a woman who was being attacked. Now, I don't know the full details of this incident, and it's possible this man, Carl Neal, overstepped the boundaries of what's reasonable in trying to defend this woman. But when this story comes out and people hear stories like this, it's no surprise that many people don't want to get involved in a confrontation. It's not just about intervening to protect another person from attack. It's about protecting yourself or protecting children. In this story, a man saw an overturned vehicle and rushed to save the woman's life and helped her start breathing. An officer told him to move his truck, but he refused to leave this woman's side because he feared she might die and he did have medical training. Eventually, the police arrested the man. Or how about this story from Miami? A man helped a lost toddler, police say. He was then smeared online as a predator. A man trying to help a lost toddler find her parents was misidentified as a kidnapper on social media over the weekend, according to police in Lakeland, Florida, prompting him to leave town in fear for his safety and the safety of his family. The citizen attempted to ask the girl where her parents were and walked with her in hopes she could point them out, the statement said, a fact verified by at least one independent witness. At that point, bystanders told the parents the man was attempting to kidnap the child. As the two were nearing the playground, three men approached them from behind, Patch reported. One man grabbed the girl, and the other man, who was the child's father, punched the man five or six times. I thought he was trying to take my daughter, the girl's father told News Channel 8. Police concluded that the man was only trying to help. We had an independent eyewitness that saw him walking around asking, Is this your parents? Is that your father? Sergeant Gary Gross of the Lakeland Police Department told Fox 13 News. The father and his friends were not satisfied with the man's explanation or that of the police. So I guess in Lakeland, you can kidnap a child and get away with it, the father said to police, local media reported. It's not so easy to come to the defense of someone when you can be mistaken as the perpetrator. When people talk about the idea of a good guy with a gun in the United States, one of the things that's brought up in the debate is that the police won't know who the good guy or the bad guy is. Think about it this way. Someone starts shooting with a handgun, and the good guy with the gun draws their handgun and orders them to stop. When the police approach the scene, they simply see two people with handguns shooting at each other. So let's go back to the original story. This woman was being attacked. Well, if those men intervened and a police officer walked in, he would simply see two men fighting with each other, and it's probable both of the men would be arrested. There's no easy solution to this. And then going to the last story I just talked about. A man who actually tried to help a little girl was branded a pervert and actually physically attacked by the girl's father. Heading now to Australia, we see this story. Most men are reluctant to help lost kids, worried they will be called a pervert, new research shows. Disturbing new research from Pure Profile reveals 23% of fathers would shy away from assisting a child in need because they might be perceived as having suspect motives. Another 45% of dads admit it would cross their minds that someone might interpret their actions as inappropriate, but if a child was in great distress, they would go to their aid. The study found that the majority of men are worried about being misidentified as someone malicious if they tried to help a child, and at least a quarter of the men would refuse to help children out of the fear of being identified as a criminal. And in the UK, we had the famous story from this year. Pensioner, 78, arrested for murder after stabbing burglar to death in his own home. A pensioner has been arrested after a suspected burglar was killed during a violent tussle at his home. The 78-year-old was held on suspicion of murder after the 38-year-old died of his wounds in the hospital in the early hours of Wednesday morning. Police said the struggle broke out after the pensioner, named locally as Richard Osborne Brooks, found two men inside his home in South Park, Hither Green, South London, shortly after midnight. One of the burglars, who was armed with a screwdriver, forced the homeowner into his kitchen while his accomplice went upstairs. Detectives believe a struggle then took place between one of the males and the homeowner, and the 38-year-old intruder was stabbed in the upper body. He was later found collapsed in nearby Further Green Road by paramedics from London Ambulance Service, who took him to a central London hospital where he died at 3.37 a.m. Police were unable to confirm whether the suspect had been stabbed with the screwdriver. The second suspect fled the scene before police arrived and is now being hunted by the Met's Homicide and Major Crime Command. Gordon Williams, a local resident, said, I could hear people moaning in the street and just thought it was someone drunk. 
I saw the body laid in the street and another guy jump in a van and leave. These stories are not difficult to come by. People are increasingly worried about even defending themselves in some parts of the world, and people are reluctant to help children and women in the instance of violence because it's possible they will be punished for it. However, I don't want people to think that I'm actually saying it is more likely you will be punished than not, because certainly it is much easier to find a story about a good Samaritan who was cherished as a hero for intervening to save someone's life. In this story, we can see a man saved an old woman's life and was brought to tears by an incredible surprise. A Navy veteran was heading to the gym when he saw a purse snatcher try to rob a 76-year-old woman in a parking lot in Florida. The 24-year-old man heroically ran over, chased the alleged robber, and held him down until police arrived. After Ellen DeGeneres caught wind of his incredible actions, she invited him onto the show to tell his story. But of course, she had plenty of surprises in store for him. Ellen brought in this man's mother, they hugged on TV, and she gave him a check for $10,000 to help pay for college. So there are stories of positive results when someone intervenes to help someone else. But I don't find it unreasonable that people are refusing to step up to defend others because for one, I'm sure a lot of people just don't want to be involved in a confrontation. But there are just too many stories about people being punished for trying to do something good. If you intervene and accidentally hurt or kill someone, you can be charged criminally for the damage you inflict. And if you don't know how much force to apply or a court decides you applied too much force, you can be punished. In this instance, the two men walking away probably did the safest thing for them. By not defending this woman, they probably saved themselves a huge hassle and potential criminal charges. So let me wrap up the whole point of this video. Again, I don't think you are more likely to be punished than you are to be rewarded. I believe in most instances, if you step in to help defend someone, you'll probably be thanked, complimented, a lot of people will be grateful that you did this. But there are just too many stories we're hearing about individuals who get punished for trying to do just that. In fact, now we have a story of two men being shamed because they didn't want to intervene. The woman in this story is more upset at the two men than she is the guy who actually attacked her. So let me know what you think in the comments below. We saw the study about how men were reluctant to help lost children and worried about being identified as a criminal. We heard the story about a man who was actually attacked and smeared online as a criminal for trying to help a little girl. We heard the story about a man who was facing prison time because he intervened to help a woman, and now we're hearing that this woman is angry at these men for not wanting to step up. So what do you think? Should we stand up and defend those in need, or should we take care of ourselves? Comment below. We'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me on Twitter, at TimCast. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.